Good evening. You're joining me for a discussion on autoimmune gastritis and pernicious anemia. I'm Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician on this Gates Brain Health Review. Okay, so going through this, uh, relative to autoimmune gastritis, uh, let's blow it up this way. Autoimmune gastritis is a very common condition. Sadly, it's underdiagnosed and underrecognized. A lot of people have it and they're not being told that they have it. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll give you the tips and tools to talk to your doctor about what the right tests are. Uh, for appropriately identifying this. Uh, we want to increase recognition of autoimmune gastritis and we need to understand that the autoimmune nature of it is probably triggered by two separate issues. Uh, one issue may be an H. pylori infection, which is a stomach bacteria. Also, the condition may be just triggered haphazardly, so to speak, by an autoimmune reaction where the immune system is becoming too overreactive without the appropriate uh, controls and checks and balances, so to speak. And as a consequence, the stomach lining starts to get destroyed. Uh, it's very important for you to know that there's a significant overlap between autoimmune thyroid conditions and autoimmune gastritis. So it's important, in my opinion, for all autoimmune gastritis patients to be checked for autoimmunity to the thyroid and really vice versa. Uh, if you have Hashimoto's, you're a Hashi's patient, it may also be important to get checked for autoimmune gastritis because autoimmune gastritis may be the explanation of low stomach acid, symptoms of uh, acid reflux, signs of iron deficiency, signs of B12 deficiency. Understand also that there's a strong embryologic relationship between the thyroid and the stomach, and they basically are derived from the same endodermal tissue, and that is probably why we see such a, a significant degree of overlap between the two conditions. Autoimmune gastritis is really important because it can lead to gastric carcinoids and adenocarcinoma. So it's very important for this condition to be appropriately diagnosed by a gastroenterologist and it's appropriate or it's very important to have appropriate follow-up. All right, so let's hide this slide. Uh, I love this slide, it's from a pathology journal. I think it really represents things well. You can pause the video and, and look at it in detail. It represents what a gastroenterologist is going to see and that people will have an H. pylori induced gastritis. Lots of times it's down here in the antrum. Whereas autoimmune gastritis tends to manifest in the corpus or the body of the stomach, uh, it can be up here in the fundus and also referred to as the oxidic, oxinic, oxinic mucosa. I always mispronounce that. Here you can see the lab test, which I'm going to discuss here pretty soon. Um, and just a good slide to look at if you have questions about differentiating H. pylori gastritis versus autoimmune gastritis. And as I mentioned, it's thought, and a lot of authors are arguing, that H. pylori can be throughout the stomach and be what's initiating the autoimmune gastritis in some patients. Okay, we're going to hide that. And tips to discuss with your doctor. Uh, getting tested for H. pylori may be something to discuss with them. The complete blood count is so important because we can see signs of iron deficiency or signs of B12 deficiency in the complete blood count based on the size and the color of your red blood cells. Iron and TIBC ferritin are important markers uh, that I use to look at iron deficiency and so do most other doctors, homocysteine and methylmalonic acid are good tests of B12 utilization, and parietal cell antibodies, intrinsic factor antibodies are very important in this diagnostic workup, as is gastrin, thyroid antibodies. And you may want to talk to your doctor about B12 therapy because there is some evidence coming out that in 
B12 therapy may actually help to reset or serve as a tripwire, so to speak, for the autoimmune response to the stomach. So I'm not giving you medical advice here, but these are topics to discuss with your doctor. If you feel that you haven't had appropriate um, intensive laboratory investigation of your condition. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, this is my first in a, a new series where I'm trying to give you conditions in about three minutes. So I was close to that. I think we're at about five minutes, but uh, send me your questions. Uh, hopefully this helps you to discuss your questions as well with your doctors. Have a good night, everyone. Talk to you soon.